In this video, we're going to be doing an antiderivatives preview to just preview the seven antiderivative rules to have a sense of what they are before we actually go in depth with them. So our first rule, which we're going to get some new notation as well as these new rules. So the antiderivative of a constant, how we're going to take that is we're going to do that constant times x normally you could work in different variables so you would use a, a t or a p you could have different variables but i'm just going to use x's for these first ones so if i want the antiderivative of a regular number so say i'm taking the antiderivative of four with respect to x so there's that new notation that take the antiderivative symbol, looks like a really long s, and then dx just means with respect to x. So I'm going to take that constant 4 times x, and all of our answers are going to end with a plus c, which we'll see why when we look more closely at the antiderivative rules. So it's just that constant times x plus c. Not as easy as a derivative of a constant, which would just be 0, but not too bad either. Take that constant times x plus c. So if we do another example, say we have to take the antiderivative of 6.2, with respect to x, we would take that constant, 6.2, multiply it up by x, plus c. So we have our new notation and our new rule. Take the constant times x plus c, even if it's a negative number, so you could have negative 2.1. Take the antiderivative of negative 2.1 with respect to x, you would just get negative 2.1x plus c. Now, our next rule is if we actually have an x in it. So we're going to have our power rule. So to take the antiderivative, we're going to add 1, divide by that number, and raise it as new power. So we're going to take our power and add 1 to it, divide by the number, and raise it as our new power. So, complete opposite of a derivative. Derivative, you bring down and multiply by the power, and then you subtract one for the new power. Here we're adding one, and we're going to divide instead of multiplying. So, for instance, if we had to take the antiderivative of x to the ninth with respect to x, our power is 9, so we're going to add 1 to the power. 9 plus 1 is 10. We're going to divide by it, raise it as our new power, and then all of these end with a plus c. We're going to do that same thing again. I'll give you another power. Say we have x to the fourth in our take the integral symbol. So we're going to take the antiderivative of x to the fourth. 4 plus 1 is 5. So we're going to get 1 over 5, x to the fifth plus c. So we're going to add 1, divide by it, raise it as our new power. Now we're going to combine that with the next rule, which is if there's a constant multiple. It doesn't change anything. There's no changes to the two things we just learned. Okay? So if it's a constant, we're still going to keep that constant times x plus c. If we have a power, we're going to add one to the power, divide by it, raise it as our new power. So even if we had 5x to the 8th with respect to x inside our take the antiderivative or take the integral symbol, we would keep the constant multiple 5. And then we would still just add 1 to our power 8. 8 plus 1 is 9. So we'll divide by 9 and raise x to the 9. Same thing again. If we had to take the integral of negative 4x to the 12 with respect to x, we take that integral, we're looking at negative 4x to the 12, so we're going to keep the negative 4, keep the constant multiple. It doesn't change how we do our rule, though. We're going to add 1 to 12. So 12 plus 1 is 13, so we're going to have negative 4 over 13, x to the 13. These all end with a plus c. So rule 3 is kind of like a do-nothing rule. It doesn't change how we take our antiderivative. Same thing with rule 4 we would still do our same exact rule. There's no changes. So even if we have something added or subtracted. So if we had 
maybe 5x to the seventh plus 3. We're going to do each rule normally. So I have x to the seventh, so I'm going to add 1 to 7, so I'll have 5 over 8, x to the 8, add 1, divide by it, raise it as my new power, and then 3 is a constant, so I'm going to take that constant times x plus c doesn't change how we do our rule to have anything added or subtracted. We could do that again. We don't have a ton of space. So if I have x minus 1 inside an integral symbol with a dx. So I have a regular x to the first power. I'm going to add 1 to that. So 1 plus 1 is 2. So I have 1 over 2 x to the 2. And then we have our constant is negative 1. It's going to be that constant times x plus c. So we really have just two rules here, even though there's four. Have a constant, take that constant times x. If you have x to the power, add 1 to the power, divide by it, raise it as your new power. Whether you have things multiplied or added or subtracted. So then if we change it up a little bit, if we have the exponential function, so the exponential function is e to the x. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. The antiderivative is also e to the x plus c. It's a very simple rule. We could combine it with another one. If you have e to the x minus 10 with respect to x, the antiderivative of e to the x is just e to the x. And then you take that constant times x plus c. Our next rule is if we have the antiderivative of 1 over x, we're going to have a whole explanation of why this rule is the rule. But the antiderivative of 1 over x is the natural log of x, where x is in absolute values. So if we had a function that was x cubed minus 1 over x inside an integral symbol with a dx in there, means with respect to x. Well, x cubed, I'm going to add 1. So 1 over 4, x to the 4, 3 plus 1 is 4. And then anything with 1 over x, the antiderivative is the natural log of x plus c. And technically that x should be an absolute value, so you take the ln of just positive numbers. Our final rule is if we change the base of an exponential function, so instead of e to the x, which the antiderivative is just e to the x plus c, if we had a different number in there, so say we had 10, raised to the x instead of e, which is about 2.7. If you have 10 to the x, the antiderivative is 10 to the x divided by ln of 10. Derivatives you multiply by ln of your base, antiderivatives you divide. You do that again. If you have 4 to the x minus x to the fourth, combining a couple rules, 4 to the x, the antiderivative is 4 to the x divided by ln of 4 minus, now I have x to a number, so I'm going to add 1 to that number. 4 plus 1 is 5, divide by 5, raise it to the 5, plus c. And there's all seven antiderivative rules. Have a number, multiply it by x plus c. Power rule, add 1, divide by it, raise it as your new power. Don't change your method even if you have something multiplied or added or subtracted. Antiderivative of the exponential function e to the x is just e to the x. 1 over x is the natural log of x. And something like 10 to the x would be 10 to the x divided by ln of 10. We'll go in-depth with these more rules in following videos.